In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to build a single worksheet KPI in Sparkline. So in the example you see on the screen, you can see I have 733,000 in sales with some context below that and then a Sparkline. And I've created that all in one sheet. The benefit of this is it allows us to uh, use less sheets when we build our dashboards. So let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and let's just look at sales for now. I'm just going to put sales on the text shelf and we get 2.3 million in sales. But really what I want is sales for the current year. So I'm going to just go ahead and create a new calculated field. Uh, I'm going to call it sales CY for current year. So uh, I'm going to say uh, fixed now nothing. And I want to say sum if the year of order date equals the max year of order date. So that's going to tell me, uh, looking at each row in the data set, does the, um, does the year in the data set, is it the same as the, the largest year or the most recent year in the data set? Then I want to return, uh, let me just put this on a couple lines here. Then I want to return uh, sales and then end. So end and a pistachio to close it off. And there we go. So now I have my sales current year and I can show you how this works by putting year into the column shelf. So what I should get is 733,000 back. So I'm going to drop this, uh, drop my new measure onto the shelf and you'll see I get 733,000. Perfect. Okay. So we've got sales current year. I can get rid of my year on my column shelf. So now I want to create another measure that's sales for the prior year. So I'm going to duplicate my current year measure and then edit that and make this prior year. So now I want to say if the year of order date is equal to the max year minus one, then sales. So let me actually, let me go ahead and put an order date back on here. So we should get the value of, let's put sales back on. So I should get 609,206, this value right here. So let's put sales current, uh, sorry, sales prior year into the view and we get 609,206, perfect. Okay, great, I can get rid of sales now and I wanna create the difference between the two as a percentage. So I'm gonna create a new calculated field and I'm gonna call this uh, percent uh, change. And I'm going to say, this is when I like to go ahead and drag my fields in. So I want to take my current year minus my prior year. And I'm going to wrap that whole thing in, in parentheses. And I'm going to divide that by my sales for the prior year. And I'm going to change my default number format for that to be a one decimal percentage. But then I'm going to go into the custom option because I want to have a plus next to the positives and minus next to the negatives. So something like that. So you could see all I did was uh, I separate the positive and negatives by a semicolon and just put a plus or minus in front. Okay, great. So if I put percent change onto the measure value self, you'll see that my growth was 20.4%. Okay, fantastic. So I'm gonna take, uh, I can take my sales prior year off the view because I don't need that. And I'm going to go ahead and drag measure values to the detail shelf for now. Take measure names. And I'm not sure if I need that or not, so I'm just going to move that to detail as well. Actually, I'll just go ahead and take it off. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to create our spark line. <clears throat> so I'm just going to drag order date and make it continuous months. And I want this to just be the most recent year. So uh, I could drag order date into the filters and choose 2019. But when I get data for 2020, I want it to switch over. Actually, I just want it to always show the last 12 months. So I'm going to say last 12 months. And what I want to say now is um, I want to say the uh, date trunk at the monthly level oops, of my order date field. Oh, back then is greater than or equal to. And I want to go ahead and uh, I want, first I want to get the maximum date. So, so I'm just copy and paste that. And I want to get the max of these values. Oops. 
So I'm going to do mustachio. Okay, this is going to give me the maximum month, but then I need it to be uh, 12 months prior to that. So I'm going to do a date add at the monthly level. And my interval is going to be minus 12. Uh, let's see, no, minus 11, because it starts at base zero, and then my max field. So let's see if that does the trick. So to test this, I like to put my uh, calculation onto the color shelf. And I should see if I lasso this, I get uh, 12, uh, I should get 12 months. So let me do that again. Let me lasso these marks. And I get 24 items. I get 24 because I have two measures on the uh, measure value shelf. Okay, great. So the benefit of that is, um, let me just show you how that would work. So if I take order date, and let's say that my data uh, only goes through, uh, let's say, uh, we're going to say all, and let's say my data only goes through September. So I'd want it to go from October of 2018 to September of 2019. And uh, so the way that I can test that is add this to context. That forces my month and year filter to happen before my level of detail expression. So now if I add these up again, I get 24 marks. Okay, so I know that's working. So I can move my last 12 months now from the color to the filters and say true. All right, and now we have the most recent 12 months. I'm gonna take sales and put that on the rows. All right, so we got that. I'm gonna change my color just to make it something a bit nicer. And on my labels, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my uh, little, I like little dots on the end. So I'm gonna set it to min max. And I wanted to do it based on the month field. That way I get the dots on the ends of the lines. Now notice it says January and December, but I actually want sales there instead. So I'm gonna drag sales to the label shelf. And uh, now I have those two fields. Okay, so I'm gonna move my measure values to the tooltip and I should only get, uh, I should only get one value here. So let me, actually I need to do it this way. Um, okay, there we go. So now I have sales current year and percent change on the on the tooltip. Actually, I can put them on the detail shelf. Uh, there we go. So when I hover over, I can see my sales current year, my sales for that year, and the percent change, etc. Okay, great. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually we'll do this last. So to make this a, so we have our spark line now, and to make this a single sheet KPI, I'm going to go into the title. And I'm going to actually insert my sales current year. And then underneath of that, I'm going to insert my percent change. And I'm just going to say versus prior year. And maybe I'll make this a nice big font. So maybe make it tableau semi bold, about like 24 point. And then maybe I'll leave this as tableau light and put it like 11 point, something like that. Okay, so there we go. So we have that in the title. Um, that only works because we have level of detail expressions. And now I have my lines. So last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and throw it into a nice small dashboard uh, just so we can see what it looks like. So maybe I'll make it like 500 by 500 or actually let's make it even smaller, 400 by 400. So it's going to look like a little card. So I'm going to drag that to my view. Now I can uh, uncheck, uh, just deselect my two headers maybe format my dashboard to get rid of my uh, grid lines. I want to also get rid of all of my zero lines and all of my axis rulers. And there we go. Now a grid a spark line is usually quite a bit smaller, but actually I need to, for a spark line, um, I should be editing my axis to get rid of this include zero option. That forces it to fit in the space uh, the best way. So I'm going to uncheck show header. And there we go. Now, uh, I think maybe I'll make this even smaller. There we go. So now we have a nice little card. Uh, and then if I wanted to replicate that, uh, so I'm just going to call this one sales. And if I want to duplicate that and do it for profit, I would just need to duplicate these calculations. So I'm going to duplicate those. And my sales current year, I'm going to name this profit current year. And I'm just going to change my sales to profit. And then I need to find my sales prior year and change this to profit prior year. And again, just update the measure to be profit. 
and then my percent change field is now going to be, uh, so I'm gonna call this profit prior current year minus profit oops, prior year divided by profit prior year, hit okay. And then on my, det on my detail shelf, I need to replace sales current year with profit, uh, profit current year. And then I'm gonna actually change this one and say uh, percent change is going to be, uh, I'm just gonna put profit in parentheses and put that on the detail shelf. Okay, now notice our marks are messed up uh, and I wanna put profit on my rows shelf. Make sure I deselect include in zero and hide my header. And I need to update my, uh, my, my text has to be profit instead. And then let me go ahead and see how it says missing field here. So uh, what I need to do now is I need to insert my uh, profit current year. And then here I'm gonna insert my uh, percent change prior year. And these all need to be black. So let me just go ahead and change those to black. And now we have our profit prior year. Great, so I can go ahead and now maybe I make this dashboard 400 wide and I can now put my profit KPI next to that. So there we go, so now we've got two next to each other. I do need to clean up the tooltips. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, um, I'm just gonna say uh, uh, current, or actually I could just do sales and uh, that's it. So I just need that. Okay, and then my profit, I just need to do the same thing. So I'm just gonna get rid of that and just make a profit and hit okay. And now we have our nice little tool tips, that's good. Now in my dashboard, I've got some weird overlapping things. So I think what I'll do is I'll make it about 425 wide and I'm going to add some padding around here. Or so what I'd like to do actually is instead of using padding, I'm gonna throw in a, a blank object here and uh, I'm just gonna shrink that down and see if I can shrink the size of this or if I need to put it inside of a container. Probably better, yeah, let's just do padding on this. So I'm just gonna change my padding on the right-hand side to be maybe 10. And on this one, I'm gonna change my padding on the left-hand side to be 10. And there we go, now I get a bit more space in between the two. Totally up to you how you wanna format that. Notice how my numbers don't look too great. Um, if I want to show just the sales for the most recent period, what I could do is in my label shelf, I could just uncheck the minimum and do that for both sheets. And there we go. So uh, probably need to um, maybe update this one a bit because uh, I probably need to have the word sales in here somewhere. Um, uh, so maybe what I'll do is in my title, I'll just put sales. And maybe I'll make this like, I don't know, uh, 10 point. And let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna make it uh, Tableau light like the other one. And yeah, that, that's not too bad. It's not my favorite, but we need to in somewhere in there know that it's sales and profit. So let's go to, actually maybe another way we could do it. So let me undo that. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick a dummy in here, sales, and then hide the header. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on profit. And then hide the field labels. Okay, so now we've got some, all these extra lines and stuff in here. So I'm gonna format my view, uh, get rid of my row dividers, get rid of my column dividers. And then on my sales sheet, I'm gonna copy the formatting and paste that to the other sheet. And there we go. So that's a bit better. I still don't love it, but it's uh, it's coming along. So. I would, you know, you can make these a bit bigger if you want. So if I want to just set my dashboard maybe to 2, 225, it'll make the spark line a bit bigger, uh, but I'm going to leave it around 200. So um, hopefully you found that helpful. And um, the good thing about this is you only have two sheets now, where if you had built uh, the KPIs as a, the big numbers as a sheet and the spark line as a sheet, you'd end up with twice as many sheets. So it makes it a lot easier to um, you know, to work around with. Now, one more formatting thing I've just thought about is I'm gonna actually make them all 10 around the outside. 
Um, uh, actually, the left-hand side I want to do is 5. And then this one I'm going to make, uh, let's see, let's make it 10 around the whole side, but I want the right-hand side to be 5. That way there's 10 kind of around everything. And uh, so on my dashboard, uh, I'm going to format my dashboard. Uh, format dashboard. I'm going to set my shading to maybe a light gray. Okay, I don't particularly, that didn't really work out the way I was hoping, but that's okay. So I'm going to go into my worksheet now, and I'm going to format my title. Um, actually, I want to format my worksheet. And I'm going to, uh, let's see, wrong place here. So I need to, uh, I need to format and set the shading to be white. And then let's see if that does it. Uh, that still didn't do it. Okay, so let me um, let me try one other thing. So uh, I'm kind of stuck here. What did I do? So I'm just going to undo till I get back. There we go. So um, what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and if I do the layout here, my background, if I make it gray, see that does just that part, which isn't what I want. Um, well, what I was trying to do is kind of put a border on this. Um, I'll figure that out, and then um, in the final version that you see that I post, um, you'll see the way I wanted it to look. So I wanted it to look like I uh, have nice little gray borders around it, but I'll, I'll figure that out and post the final version. So again, um, the idea here is to just create your, your big numbers and um, your spark lines in a single sheet, and I hope you found that helpful. Have a good day.